Hi, we're going to continue our city landscape and one point perspective drawing. Our drawing design is already set up here. You can see where our horizon line runs through the middle of it and we have a vanishing point right in the center. We have our graph paper underneath so that it's easy for us to create vertical lines that are all parallel. Today we're going to continue by adding some windows on our other buildings and perhaps a couple of more doors. When I look at my last building on the left right here, it needs a couple of windows up here and a large door down here that's actually going to go all the way down and off the page. You won't get to see all of the door. So I'm going to continue my line that extended from my vanishing point and mark the tops of my doors all the way down and add in one more door here at the end. Then use the vertical lines on the graph paper to help me get that door so that the two sides are parallel. Directly above that door I'd like to add in a couple of windows. Again I'm going to use my window line that started all the way back there at the vanishing point, line my ruler up with the bottoms of those other windows and use that to help me to create the bottom of my lowest window. I'm going to pivot Use the horizon line to help me get lined up for that next one. For the top of that window, I'll rotate up for the bottom of the window that's above that one. Always checking my vanishing point and making sure I don't lose that pivot point. In fact, I'll continue putting my pencil there so the pivot is made easier. Then use my ruler to trace the lines on the graph paper to get lines that are very vertical. And of course I want the sides of my window to be parallel. All the time when I'm sketching, I'm sketching very light lines. That way, if I want to come back and erase anything or make some changes, it's easy to do that without leaving any marks. Now, those windows clearly have panes of glass in them. That means they're divided. So I'm going to use the lines on the graph paper again. I made each one three blocks on the graph paper wide. So I'll space that out and add a line on each set of blocks on the graph paper. And that gives me my vertical panes. I need to add in some lines for my horizontal panes. I'm going to anchor that with my pencil on the vanishing point. Divide each window into thirds. Continue to rotate. And divide this window into thirds. Your thirds don't have to be exactly equal. In reality, they should be but it's very difficult to tell on a drawing like this. So if they're not, that's all right. I'm going to add some panes of glass in this window as well. I'm going to divide that one into fourths. And then add in a vertical line. So I have eight panes in that window. Now further down here as well, we could divide those windows. I'm just going to divide those into halves. Same with these windows on the opposite side. Now, this last building right here definitely needs some windows in it. In the picture that we have, there are four windows on this side of the building and two windows on this end. In order to make this an end of the building, we need to go ahead and square it off. We need to put some horizontal lines in 
It followed the lines on the graph paper and mark where the corner of that building is, where someone would walk down this street and then turn to the left to walk down the next street. And I can erase the rest of that perspective line that helped me plan where that building was going to be. Same is true with all of these sections through here that reflect the horizon line. We actually don't need a horizon line, but it helped us do our plan. So I'm going to quickly erase any remnants of the horizon line. Now let's add some windows on this building. It looks like uh, they're very far off the ground. We could actually use the bricks to help us plan these windows. So I could count up one, two, three bricks and put a window. Oh, let's go from here, stretch it up. One, two, three bricks, skip a brick. Go one, two, three bricks. Actually, I think I'll skip two bricks there. That's a little more realistic. So I'm putting dots where I plan on adding in the corners of those windows. But I haven't decided for certain yet that that's where they would look the best. Then, let's see, we're one, two, three, four, five bricks. So we'll make that window just one set of bricks wide. Skip a brick and then make that one brick wide. I'm just putting a dot where the corners are gonna be for that window. And then I'm gonna finish outlining it. Let's use the straight edge on the ruler. I always like using the inch side of my ruler because it's got a metal edge in there that helps me draw very straight lines. So there are my four windows. Let me darken up where the bottoms of those are going to be. And we could add in some panes, but first let's do a little bit of erasing so it's easy for us to see the space that we have to create those panes of glass. Now any window that you construct should have some sort of frame around it, whether that's a thicker piece of concrete on a brick building like this, or if it's on a wooden building, it should have a wooden frame around it. So that would mean using your ruler and going back around and doubling up those lines and adding in some thickness. I'll show an example of that in just a minute. Right now, I want to complete the layout for where those windows are going to be. So again, line up with my vanishing point. Find the center of these windows, which is easy because I know it's right in the center of the bricks. Rotate, line up with my vanishing point mark the center of those windows. And let's add a vertical line in each one that will mark where the panes of glass are. Again, pretty easy to do because I can line up with the lines on the graph paper and the bricks. So now as I turn the corner here, all of my lines go from being on a diagonal following lines of perspective to being horizontal and following the lines on the graph paper. Because we're looking at the side of the building.
Now, I really don't have enough room here to add in another window or to add in a door like we see in the example illustration. However, if you left yourself enough room and you'd like to try to add in a door there, please feel free to attempt that. At this point, I realize I have one, two, three doors, four doors on this side, and a couple of doors on that side, which I can make double doors. Same thing with the door on this side. Using the lines on the graph paper, I'm going to add a vertical line and make double doors. At this point, I could add in some details. If I want to, on this building, put in some, uh, some curved lines that look like an awning, I can do that. And I'm free drawing that. You're going to have to use your own artistic touch now to make these get smaller as they go further in the distance. So notice they successively get smaller as they go to the center for me. Um, also, if you wanted to add in an awning over that doorway, you could do that as well. We could use that ruler for, for that though. I'm going to line up with my vanishing point, start the top of my awning. The bottom of my awning is already there and add in a couple of curves. Here's a curve for this side of the awning. And now a curve for the other side of the awning. So they're connected and then they would have a right angle on that side. And again, I'm sketching that lightly, lightly, and I can come back later and darken it up. But this is where you start demonstrating your artistic ability. Now some of these doors need some door frames around them so I can double up those lines and show where the door frame is supposed to be. If I go across my intersections like that I should use my pencil and clean that up. I can start to add in my door handles. Some of those might be tall pull handles like this one. Might even have a square around it to mark the area of the door handle or rectangle. I'm going to continue adding in my door frames. Now I'm drawing a little bit darker. I'm going to double up those beams. definitely think with a double door like this you'd have a pretty thick frame. And on double doors there would always be two door handles like that. On a single door you might just have one and that door handle is almost always going to be placed on the right hand side. As you get further up the street towards the vanishing point, those door frame lines that you're making should not be as thick. Again, that's one way perspective changes. The thickness is going to look less pronounced as you go towards the vanishing point. Now these windows, I'm only going to put a line that demonstrates the thickness on the left side. I want that to look like you're seeing the edge on the inside of the room and you wouldn't see that on this side. You would see a window sill or an edge along the bottom right here though because we have a bit of a bird's eye view on this part of the drawing. And then here we would see a bit of the worm's eye view looking up to these windows and seeing the inner sill along the top area of the window. Again, be quick to use your eraser and clean up any spot where you exceed the intersection like that. I think this is looking pretty good. I want to add some um, additional lines in these windows that mark where the panes are, the panes of glass.
Now you're welcome to add any other details that you'd like to add on these buildings. I'm going to leave each side of the drawing lined up like it is. It's kind of like it is in a big city where there's no alleys or no spaces in between these buildings. You could certainly add that in if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave it like it is now. At this point, we're going to add some color. If you have ideas for other details, like you want to add mailboxes or street signs or anything like that, you're welcome to do that. And then we're going to come back and collage in some people, some automobiles, etc. with magazine materials. I can't wait to see how your sketch turns out.